welcome dear students in epg parshala i am dr k s nagaraja of deccan college pune teaching the course of historical linguistics today we look at the tibeto burman languages the tibeto burman languages are normally considered a sub branch of sino tibetan language family which uh, includes chinese into consideration but as our concern is the languages of this subcontinent we restrict ourselves to the branch of tibeto burman so the tibeto burman languages are the fourth language family of this particular subcontinent however from the number of languages point of view probably this is the richest one it has more than 120 languages but the population point of view is not even 1% so one can easily imagine the speakers are found only in inaccessible areas of uh, hilly terrain so not much work has been done in this family so in this course we try to see what is known till today the sino tibetan family includes the sinitic branch and tibeto burman languages spoken in the almost whole of china western himalayas and in the highlands of northeast india this is the second largest family in terms of the number of speakers after indo-european family the sino tibetan family is mainly composed of two sub branches sinitic which includes chinese and related languages and the rest tibeto burman in this lecture attention is mainly given to the tibeto burman branch in india tibeto burman languages are spoken along the great himalayan mountain ranges right from ladakh in the north to the northeastern states up to tripura burma bangladesh sino tibetan languages were known for a long time by the name indo chinese which is now restricted to the languages of indo china tibeto burman languages number more than 400 of which are spoken throughout the highlands of southeast asia as well as certain parts of far of east asia and south asia the name derives from the most widely spoken of these languages namely burmese with over 32 million speakers and tibetic or tibetan over 8 million speaker these languages also have extensive literary traditions dating from the 12th century and 7th centuries respectively most of the other languages are spoken by much smaller communities and many of them have not been described in detail so far During the 18th century several scholars noticed parallels between Tibetan and Burmese both languages with extensive literary traditions in the following century Brian Hogton Hogs Hogson collected a wealth of data on the non-literary languages of the Himalayas and northeast India noting that many of these were related to tibetan and burmese others identified related languages in the highlands of southeast asia and southwest china the name tibeto burman was first applied to this group in 1856 by james logan who added karen in 1858 charles forbes viewed the family as uniting the gangetic and lohitic branches of max muller's turanian a huge family 
consisting of all the Europe, Eurasian languages except the Semitic and Aryan and Chinese languages. The third volume of Gurusan's Linguistic Survey of India was devoted to the tibeto burman languages of British India. Julius Kaproth had noted in 1823 that Burmese, Tibetan and Chinese all share common basic vocabularies but that Thai, Mon and Vietnamese were quite different. Several authors including Kuhn in 1883 and August Komarudi in 1896 described an Indo-Chinese family consisting of two branches, tibeto burman and Chinese Siamese. Jean Pirluski introduced the term Sino-Tibetan. The link to Chinese is now accepted by most linguists with a few exceptions such as Roy Andrew Miller and, uh, and others. More recent controversy has centered on the proposed primary branching of Sino-Tibetan into Chinese and tibeto burman subgroups. In spite of the popularity of this classification, first proposed by Kuhn and Conredi and also promoted by Paul Benedict in 18, 1972 and later James Matisoff, Tipto Burman has not been demonstrated to be a valid family in its own right. So a overview can be provided first of all. The Tipto Burman languages have evolved from the ancestral language probably what can be called proto tibeto burman in vastly different ways and at their own pace in accordance with the geographical and social context both in central and southern asia some tribes have been stationary others have swept over huge areas in fact, if you look at the distribution of these people, we, we start from somewhere in the upper reaches of uh, Ladakh in the west and move on the Himalayan belts to the easternmost, almost up to Burma. So this is a huge area where the tibeto burman languages are spoken. Uh, from Himachal Pradesh, we may identify Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, then we have uh, uh, Bihar, for instance, West Bengal, then Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Assam. So, a huge area where these people are uh, living, and uh, obviously they are under contact of the local people so that has some impact on their languages as well. As a result, conservative or archaic features do not occur in only one contiguous part of the language area and innovations in other. We cannot separate them, they are all mixing type because of the nature. Most of the tibeto burman languages are spoken in inaccessible mountain areas and many are unwritten, which has greatly hampered their study. It is generally much easier to identify a language as tibeto burman than to determine its precise relationship with other languages of the group. These subgroups are here surveyed on a geographical basis. The most widely spoken tibeto burman language is Burmese, the national language of Myanmar with over 32 million speakers and a literary tradition dating from the early 12th century. It is one of the Lolo Burmese languages and in, in, intensively studied and well-defined group comprising approximately 100 languages spoken in Myanmar 
and the highlands of Thailand, Laos, Vietnam and Southwest China. Major languages include Lolo, the Loloese languages with 2 million speakers in Western Siachen and Northern Yunnan, the Akha language and Honey languages with 2 million speakers in Southern Yunnan, Eastern Myanmar, Laos and Vietnam and Lisu and Lahu in Yunnan, Northern Myanmar and Northern Thailand. All languages of the Loloish subgroup show significant Austroasiatic influence. The Pailang songs transcribed in Chinese characters in the first century appear to record words from a Lolo Burmese language but arranged in Chinese order. Modern standard Burmese has undergone a set of radical changes. Initial Sa and and Sha have become Sa and Sha, Sa has become Tha, Ya and Ra have collapsed to as Ya and Kya and Kra as a palatal Cha. Furthermore, all final consonants except nasals have collapsed as glottal stops and all nasals have resulted in nasalization of the preceding vowel. In addition, the quality of vowels has been greatly altered, as was the case in Tibetan. In splits of great phonetic changes, grammatical categories are close to those scholars envisage for Proto-Tibeto-Burman. Cases of nouns and aspects of verbs are expressed through postpose particles. Study of the Burmese writing system in combination with comparative work makes possible the reconstruction of old Burmese. The language of the Mezadi inscription of 1113 is close to close in its sound system to written Burmese in its present form which dates back to at least 15th century. The racing system was taken over from the Mon people who had developed their writing from Pu, a Sino-Tibetan language known in Burma from around 500 AD. It is alphabetic of an Indian type but represents a separate southern line of development. Old Burmese is phonetically further, further from Proto-Tibeto-Burman than is Tibetan. Initial clusters are mostly gone but are felt in the development of initial consonants. Some clusters with were and liquid sounds were retained. The tonal system of Burmese, unlike that of Tibetan, developed to compensate for the loss of final features. Over 8 million people in the Tibetan plateau and neighboring areas of Baltistan, Ladakh, Nepal, Sikkim and Bhutan speak one of several related Tibetic languages. There is an extensive literature in classical Tibetan dating from the 8th century. The Tibetic languages are usually grouped with the smaller East Bodhish languages of Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh as the Bodhish group. Tibetan. Of the modern Tibetan languages and dialects, the western ones have preserved initial consonant clusters and final stops most faithfully and have had the least compensational development of tones. Most central languages and dialects, including Lhasa, have lost all consonant clusters and final stops and in the process have acquired a larger inventory of single consonants and a system of tones. These changes and reductions are linked to a similar reshaping of certain grammatical processes of word formation that now operate only through suprasegmental and syllabic elements. To a surprising degree, however, modern Central Tibetan possesses grammatical categories identical with or very similar in content though not in form to those of classical Tibetan. 
The relationship of nouns to the main verb is indicated through post post particles, the agent of a transitive verb indicated as the one by whom the action is performed and the subject of an intransitive verb expressed as the object or goal of the action. Nominal modifiers precede the nouns and verbal modifiers follow them. The main verb always placed after all nouns is followed by particles expressing aspect and tense. Old Tibetan pronunciation can be reconstructed by comparison of modern dialects and through the very conservative alphabetic script of Indian origin that goes back to the 7th century AD and found its present form in the 9th century. The orthography is far more removed from present day standard Tibetan pronunciation. Old Tibetan is one of the most uh, archaic of the Tibeto Burman languages. It retained the Tibeto Burman final stops and final ra la sa and also the initial voice consonants. Many Old Tibetan consonant clusters may be referred to Proto Tibetan. The case particles and complicated verbal conjugation perhaps represent an elaboration on somewhat simple tendencies in the proto language. Distribution of Tibeto Burman languages. A wide variety of Tibeto Burman languages are spoken on the southern slopes of the Himalayas. Sizable groups that have been identified are the West Himalayan languages of Himachal Pradesh and Western Nepal, the Tamangic languages of Western Nepal, including Tamang with 1 million speakers, and the Kiranti languages of Eastern Nepal. The Newar language or the Newari of Central Nepal has a million speakers and a literature dating from the 12th century, and nearly a million people speak Magaric languages but the rest have small speech communities. Lepcha is spoken in an area from eastern Nepal to western Bhutan. Most of the languages of Bhutan are Bodish. The Thani languages include most of the Tibeto Burman languages of Arunachal Pradesh and adjacent areas of Tibet. The remaining languages of Arunachal Pradesh are much more diverse belonging to the small Siangic, Khobwa or Kamengik, Hruso, Mizu and Digaru languages that are Mishmik groups. These groups have relatively little Tibeto Burman vocabulary and bench and post dispute their, their inclusion in Sino Tibetan itself. The greatest variety of languages and subgroups is found in the highlands stretching from northern Myanmar to northeast India. Northern Myanmar is home to the small Nungish group as well as the Kachin Luik languages, including Jingpo, with nearly a million speakers. The Brahmaputran or Sal languages include at least the Bodo, Koch, and Konyak languages spoken in an area stretching from northern Myanmar through the Indian states of Nagaland, Meghalaya and Tripura and are often considered to include the Kachin Luik group. The border highlands of Nagaland, Manipur and western Myanmar are home to a small Avo, Angami, Pachori, Thangkul and Zema groups of languages as well as the Kirby language. Maithai, the main language of Manipur with 1.4 million speakers, is sometimes linked with the 50 or so Kukish or Kukichin languages spoken in Mizoram and the Chin state of Myanmar. The Muru language is spoken by a small group in the Chittagong hill tracks between Bangladesh and Myanmar. Classification. There have been many attempts at grouping these languages at the highest level as well as at sub-branch levels as well. Here only a few are mentioned.
first detailed grouping was by Grierson 1909 his classification was supposed to be geographical contiguity than linguistic followed by Schaeffer's classification there have been two milestones in the classification of Sino-Tibetan and Tibeto-Burman languages Schaeffer, Schaeffer 1955 and Benedict 1972 which were actually produced in the 1930s and 1940s respectively. Grierson classified Tibeto-Chinese family into the Siamese Chinese subfamily of which Kamti is a representative spoken in India and the other branch is Tibeto-Burman. This sub-branch is subdivided into the following Tibeto-Himalayan branch the North Assam branch and the Assam Burmese branch. Tibeto Himalayan branch is further divided into the, the Tibetan group, the pronominalized Himalayan group, which, in, which is further divided into the Western subgroup and the Eastern subgroup and the non pronominalized Himalayan group as well. All the subgroups have innumerable small and big languages and dialects under them. Schaeffer based his classification on specific data and divided the Sino-Tibetan family into six divisions. His tentative classification did not recognize tipto burman but placed Chinese, that is Sinitic, on the same level as the other branches of a Sino-Tibetan family. He retained Thai Kadai or Dyke within the family, allegedly at the insistence of uh, colleagues, despite his personal belief that they, they were not uh, related. So the, the branching, the, uh, the languages of Sino-Tibetan are listed. Then we move on to Benedict's classification, a very influential, although also tentative classification is that of Benedict which was actually written around 1941. Like Schaeffer's work, this due on the data assembled by the Sino-Tibetan Philology project which was directed by Schaeffer and Benedict in turn. Benedict envisaged Chinese as the first family to branch off followed by Karen. So here uh, we have the uh, languages uh, as per uh, this particular classification. The proto tibeto burman language is the reconstructed ancestor of the tibeto burman languages. Among other researchers, Paul Benedict and James Matisoff have made proposals for the reconstruction of uh, this language. Phonology. The phonology of proto tibeto burman here is from Matisoff 2003 reconstruction, much of which is based on Benedict's earlier reconstructions. Consonants Proto Tibeto Burman has at least 23 consonants. Some descendants of Proto Tibeto Burman, especially the Gangtic languages, have developed dozens of sibilant fricatives and affricates. Proto-Tibeto-Burman consonant, the chart is uh, given, uh, as can be seen, there are, uh, uh, the, the stop series is not very well uh, represented, uh, whereas uh, of, there are uh, uh, fricates, uh, four fricates are there, and, uh, and some fricatives are also there, and other series are very uh, least represented. Prototypto Burman also has many final nasals, stops, and liquids. Vowels. Prototypto Burman vowels can be split into primary and secondary sets. Modern day Tibeto Burman languages have anywhere from five vowels to dozens of monophthongs and diphthongs. Matisoff also notes that languages which have greatly simplified or eliminated final consonants tend to have more vowels. The open front unrounded vowel a uh, 
is by far the most common and stable vowel in Tibeto Burman languages. Matters of 2003 reinterprets diphthongs from Paul Benedict's reconstruction as long vowels. Here, a chart of the vowels is given, which includes diphthongs also. A few secondary vowels have been posited to Proto Tibeto Burman stage. They are uh, front vowels, E, back vowel, U long, mid vowels, Ye, and O long. Tones. The tones of Tibeto Burman languages remains a controversy in terms of history and development. Most of the Tibeto Burman languages have tones at phonemic level and or, or voice registers as well. It seems now that in various branches tone developed independently. However, the tones found in Chinese Vietnamese and many other languages led many scholars in the past to include many groups and families into one family. But now Vietnamese is out of it as scholars have accepted that it is an Austroasiatic language. Preservation of stops. Sino-Tibetan languages go through a series of four stages in which final stops and nasals gradually decay as per Matisov. 1. The six final stops and nasals Pata, K, Ma, Na, Nga are all intact. Written Tibetan, Lepcha, Kanori, Garo and Cantonese are currently in this stage. 2. One or more final consonants have been reduced or dropped. In Jingfo and Nung, the velars are replaced by glottal stops, while in other languages they are completely dropped. In Mandarin Chinese, all final stops are dropped and ma has merged with, with na. Coming to syntax, Proto Tibeto Burman was a verb final language. That means the word order, subject, object, verb or SOV language with postpositions with agglutinative morphology. Proto Tibeto Burman is now reconstructed with a split ergative case marking and verb agreement system. Also, many of these languages like Dewari have numeral classifiers. Pronominalization is a uh, unique feature of some of the Himalayan languages like Bantawa, Rai, Limbo, etc. A very more complex morphology is there, the various syllabic structures available, uh, various uh, prefixes and suffixes available are mentioned. According to many authors such as James Bowman, Van Riem and others, a system of verbal agreement should be reconstructed for proto tibeto burman There are lots of prefixes and equally suffixes are very significant. A list has been given. Then we come to the end, uh, at the last is the vocabulary. The tibeto burman languages possess rich and varied vocabulary. In the older stages of Sino-Tibetan, the distinction of verbs and nouns appears unclear. Many tibeto burman or Sino-Tibetan languages have a numeral classifier systems. Various researchers have proposed reconstructed vocabulary items. One resource for Matisov's proposals for proto tibeto burman vocabulary reconstruction is a Sino-Tibetan etymological dictionary and thesaurus based at the Department of Linguistics at the University of California, Berkeley, USA. To summarize then, the knowledge of these Tibetan Burman languages is not much enough to provide a systematic comparison of these languages, even not to provide a, a comparative dictionary or comparative grammar. Of, of course, there are various attempts like of Matisov's, but that is not uh, enough because uh, taking all the languages spoken in the Northeast 
India, we need a comprehensive work on these languages, then only uh, the situation will become clear. So the students are advised to study these languages in greater detail and look at uh, uh, the possibilities of their contribution in the other languages as well, the influences of uh, tibetan Burman languages on the local either Indo-Aryan languages or Austro-Asiatic languages as well. Thank you.